Mr. Buffett, in 1976, in your tribute to Benjamin Graham, you wrote, Walter Lippmann spoke of men who plant trees that other men will sit under. Ben Graham was such a man. You're both such people. Could you share with us your 100-year vision for Berkshire? It's a question to you both. Yeah, I would like to add one thing about Ben Graham. Uh, ben Graham did all kinds of things for me, and he never expected one thing in return. I mean, just you name it, and he did it, and, and there wasn't any hidden, you know, or slide, a hint, I should say, of, of anything he expected in return. And uh, uh, I, I checked. Uh, well, he, he wrote a book in 1949 that, in a sense, said to me in very persuasive terms that what I'd been spending the previous eight or nine years working at and loving was all wrong. And uh, that book has been, I, I check it every now and then on Amazon to where it ranks, and you know, Amazon ranks hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of books uh, by sales, and Ben Graham's book has been up there like number 300 or 350 or something like that forever, and there isn't, there isn't any book like it. I wrote Harper Collins a note the other day, because they're bringing out another edition, and I asked them how many copies have been sold, and they said the records didn't go back far enough, but they, they had 7.3 million copies of this little book that changed my life, and uh, uh, continues to outsell every investment book. Every investment books come along, and you know, they're number 400 or 1,000 or something for a while, and then all of a sudden they're numbered 25,000 or 200,000. And, and this, this book, you know, in how many areas can you find any book that has had that sustained position? You can't, you go back and look at number one in 1950 or number two or number three, and you look at it in 51 and 52, they don't continue. I mean, they just don't continue. Uh, cookbooks, maybe one or two of them last for a while, but there is nothing, and this book lives on, and everybody keeps bringing out new books and saying a lot of other things, but they aren't saying anything that's as important as what he said in 1949 in this relatively thin little book. So, uh, you know, our vision for Berkshire is exactly what we said today. We, we want it to be a company that is owned by its shareholders and behaves in a way that society is happy that it exists and not unhappy. And we will have unlimited capital, we'll get lots of talent, and we've got a base that can't be beat, and there's no reason why it can't be perpetuated just like Ben's book and maybe be an example to other people. And, and if so, we'll be very happy. Charlie? Yeah, one of the really interesting things about Ben Graham, he was a really gifted teacher, a very honorable prof profession. And that is what has lasted. However, an interesting fact that he was sheepish about in his old age was that more than half of all the investment return that Ben Graham made in his whole life came from one stock, one growth stock, Geico, Berkshire's uh, subsidiary. And he, he, at the time he operated, there were a lot of sort of lousy companies that were too cheap, and you could make a little money floating from one to another. But the big money he made was one growth stock. Buying one undervalued great company uh, is a very good thing, as Berkshire has found out again and again and again.